You okay. Know? Hey, man, it's the trucking guy coming at you. Hey, I got him here with Tony, the driver. He's been with us for a few years. You know, I'm going to just kind of get some uh, some questions here going, talking about, you know, how you found us and stuff. I think you found us through one of the guys that was with us. You met him on the road or something, right? Yeah. Um, I remember uh, I was parked, and um, I I was working for uh, for this company that was charging me a lot, man. was charging me like 25%, 30%. Uh -huh. um, and that's why I call, that's why I, I talked to this guy and I saw the, uh, he had a sign saying money, penny trucking. So, so he gave me all the information and that's, uh, how I find you guys. And shit, I've been with you guys for, uh, oh, for about two years now. Yeah. I don't know. I was talking. Hang on a second. I got to fix this shit. Hold on. Hey, take that I'm shit off. I think it's because this thing is too heavy. I have my case on the, on the phone, and I've got a thing here. All right. All right, so we should be good now. So anyway, you, uh, you met a guy that was on the road, and uh, that's how you kind of came on with us, and now you've been with us for a few years. I was just talking with Azure the other day. And shit, it's been a while, man. I, I didn't realize I'd been off the road for like two years now, man, that I haven't even been driving. And I was I remember driving we when uh, I had my red truck and my white truck and Jose was with us. We was down there picking up at the outside of Baltimore at the port, picking up the Mercedes vans and uh, and running. I remember we was coming down, all three of us together to Florida and shit. We was doing those all the time. And uh, we were making good money doing that. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah. I was like, holy yeah, crap, I, I did the uh, math. And I was like, man, it's been a long time now. Yeah, I was more than two years now. And yeah. like I said, you know, I'm, I, I, it seems like it was only like a year ago. But, man, I guess it was it was longer than that. We were doing the math the other day on how long it's been, you know. It's been yeah. over two years that I've been yeah. on the road. Yeah, it's been over two years. And, um, and I'm happy, you know. I mean, um, I bring money home and. And yeah, before, yeah. I was, before I was with this other company, they were charging me too much, 25%. The other one was charging me 30 I mean, uh, yeah, I couldn't do it. And I know one of you came on, one of the other companies, they owed you a lot of money to get paid and shit and uh, yeah, stuff like not, that. They you know? were not paying me. They were not paying me the whole amount of the delivery. I mean, uh, they used to give me partials. And I said, wait a minute, but this is, this is no partials. This, they were, they were just taking me as, you know, as a sucker, you know, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But now you've been over here for a while and you've been able to, you know, get back on track with, you know, the truck payments and everything. You've been doing good now for a while. And, you know, even now with our dispatch, they've been killing it, man. We've been getting some great freight, man. And really, I mean, freight is up right now, too. But I think yeah, it's, I mean, it's um, kind of sad because it's at the detriment to a lot of people with COVID. A lot of people went out of business, man. And uh, I was looking at the load boards yesterday because, I, I, you know, I don't get on it. I don't dispatch no more, but we've got like five dispatchers now. But I was looking at the load boards just to kind of see, man. It, it's almost impossible not to book for two dollars a mile now. It, you know, there's loads all day long for two dollars a mile. You know, that's never been that way. You know, when I was because I dispatched you and everybody for a long time, man. And a lot of times we were booking a dollar sixty, you know, dollar eighty, whatever. You know. I know. I know. It was hard. It was hard because, um, you know, when uh. When you have the uh, overhead that you have to pay a lot of things, you know, yeah. uh, right. but now it's more, um, you know, it's more comfortable to work because right. um, you go shorter distance and, and you make good money. Even yeah. if, you, if you go long distance, you're going to you're going to be making a lot more money. You know, right. like in my case, I mean, you know, it, I mean, you know it, that in my case, um, I just go anywhere. I mean, I can I can say, you know, I want here, I want there. No. I go where the money is, you know, I right. go where the money is because, um, that's, that's the thing, man. You kind of, you, you know, a lot of guys come on, they ask me, that's one of the first thing when they ask me is, you know what? I don't have tarps. I got a 30 foot trailer. I don't have a CDL, all this bullshit. And I'm like, man, you're just putting limitations on yourself. Everything is a limitation. No tarps, no chains, no CDL, no 40 foot, no ramps or whatever. You know what I mean? You got to have all, if you take down all those limitations, imagine how much money you can make. And even if you don't make a lot more money, you make easier money. You're not working so hard to get the money. Easier, you know I mean? easier, yeah, easier money, easier money, yeah. for real. But even, 
like with your other companies, you never did any wide loads or anything. And we do a lot of wide loads here, you know, the oversized stuff and it pays pretty good. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah, but... load, you know, wide loads are a little more complicated because you have to go by waypoints. You know, you got to go from point A to point B, from point B, because you got to go through all these roads that DOT, they tell you, but you figure, yeah, but, I'm, but you're going to make more money. So it's worth the, uh, it, you know, I mean, you and cannot. If you're gonna, in, in, in the industry, you're going to be, if you're specialized, if you got special equipment or you're willing to do something different that the next guy's not, obviously they're going to pay more money for that. You know what I mean? And Yeah. Uh, the, the, the bad part is that um, uh, you can only work like from, let's say, 7 o'clock in the morning to around 6 because, you know, you can only do it in daytime. Right. Um, but it's still you, you know, it's still you make good money. I mean, yeah. it's not bad. What do you think? What do you think about the next day pay getting paid after the load? That's better than like before your other companies you were doing like what at the end of the week or something or every two weeks or what? No, but the end of the week. But, you know, this last company was just giving me partials. Some, yeah. you know, I mean, they, they owe me like they owe me. I don't know how many thousands of dollars that, that I but I decided to quit because yeah. uh, I mean, what was, I mean, with you guys, it's, um, it's good because yeah. um, you get the money right away. I mean, I, I drop on, if I want the money in three, four hours, I can get it or deposit it next day. And, right. you know. and that, that really, that's the biggest thing I try to tell people about business is cash flow, man. You're going to be working on your credit card or a fuel card for that next week and that next week. And you're always waiting for money. But here, as soon as you drop the load, you got the money. You know what I mean? So there's no yeah. reason why to 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 have problems with with breakdowns or and that helps right because you've had shit you've been doing it even for us for years now and and you've had breakdowns tires all kind of shit you know what I mean you rip a tarp and then your next load you need a tarp you got to go get a tarp whatever but it's good to have that money right so as soon as you drop the load you got your money and you don't have to worry about it as bad you know what I mean yeah you need the cash flow definitely yeah. you need the cash flow. could you yeah. imagine if you had to wait for a week or two weeks to get paid on like some of these companies. And, uh, and and all the shit that's happened, man. You know, with the breakdowns and tires and and uh, whatever. You know what I mean? Brakes, tarps, oh, equipment. Crazy. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 You know, I had one of my guys. He was outside of Texas, and uh, thank goodness. And we just paid him that morning because somebody stole all his ramps. Man, they took them off the fucking trailer. They actually took the ramp, the 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 big ones. You know what I mean? And uh, they took them off <laughs> the trailer. I don't know they how took they the ramp. Yeah, he was uh, in the hotel asleep, and they took the ramps off the trailer. So luckily, he was able to, you know, have money right then and, and go take care of. But he reported him stolen. And that's how, you know, Texas. You go to Houston. If it ain't nailed down, they'll steal it, man. You know, your tarps, whatever, your chains, they take it. Hey, yeah, I, I don't know. I, did I tell you that uh, that I got a uh, a thief was trying to get into my truck? When was this? No, you didn't tell me. Oh man, that was uh, what about? About three weeks ago, I was in a, in a hotel. Really? And, yeah, and I, I don't know, man. Something told me to go to my truck for some reason. I, I woke up, and I went to my truck, man, and I grabbed the, <laughs> I grabbed the motherfucker, man. The motherfucker, he was so scared. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir, I'm sorry. Man, I tell you. And then I, uh, I went to the hotel at the lobby, and you want to call the police? I said, no, no, it's all right. Just uh, let this fucker go, you know. And, <laughs> That's crazy, man. That was one yeah. of my biggest fears when I was sleeping at night, man. I sleep in these truck stops or some of these Walmart parking lots or places or whatever. And I was thinking, man, somebody's going to break in. You know, I, I went to Washington one time and they told me some guy got stabbed to death in his truck the night before. I was like, holy shit, I got to get out of here, man. This place is a crap hole, you know, or maybe it was Oregon. I was somewhere up there and I was just like, this is ridiculous. I said, why'd they stab him? And I looked it up. It was on the news, but they just stabbed him to rob him, broke in his truck and stabbed him. Now, what it was is the guy, he told me, he said, hey, you got a, a ratchet strap. I said, a ratchet strap? for Yeah, you need one. I got one. And he said, no, when you go in inside and go to sleep, put it between your doors and, and ratchet it tight. I said, I got locks. He said, no, they'll pick the locks and they'll come in there and kill you while you're asleep and take your money and all your stuff, you know? I said, no, you're crazy. He said, look it up. It happened right here last night in this room. No, but I heard, I heard that. It up. Yeah, yeah, I heard that happen. <laughs> Yeah, that's the kind of stuff we deal with, you know. It's the most dangerous job in the nation, man, between accidents and, and whatever else and that, you know, it's it's crazy.
Man, that's crazy shit for real, man. Yeah. Man. What about the vans? I, I'm not looking at the loads, but have you done any vans in a while? Like we, uh, we used no, to do back in the day with going from Baltimore and, and South Carolina? No, I haven't got none, none of those. Uh, most of them uh, is um, F-150, you know, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. I but got a um, lot of trucks and stuff. I mean, uh, you know, the truth is, uh, you know, it's a good job because you make good money, but uh, I know it's, it's dangerous, but, you know, sometimes you got to sacrifice a lot of things, man, you know, but. Um, what about, uh, um, just to bring, I mean, because you've been here the longest, you, you're pretty much the, the oldest driver that we have here as far as been here the longest, you know what I mean? Um, what, uh, you know, obviously everything's not perfect, but what do you think about the benefits of being on and you've been able to be here for years and, and you're still here, you know what I mean? And there's been several times, I'm sure, you know, we've been through ups and downs and slow freight and COVID and, and all this bullshit that you maybe thought about getting out of it, you know, or major breakdown and stuff, but you've been able to hang in there. Um, you think that the, the biggest benefit that you've been able to do it this long is just because you got with a decent company that keeps you paid and- Yeah, I know, I know. And I mean, I know you, I know, I know your wife, you got a beautiful family, you know, your kids. And I take all that into consideration. You know, I mean, uh, I've been to your house. It's a family, you know, uh, good people. I mean, what can I say? You know, like I tell my wife, uh, I mean, uh, all the people, they just take you to an office there and uh, they sit you uh, in front of a desk, but you guys open uh, the doors to, to your house. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, I didn't think about that. Like with the company, it's kind of like a uh, 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 you're a number. You know what I mean? You can come out here. You're fine if you want to sit there. You're gonna talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it's like I don't know, man. I, I, it's like it's like more like family. You know, it's not uh, it's not like like you work for somebody yeah, or. Hell, we met on the road several times. We used to, when we were running those vans, man, even with Jose and stuff back in the day when I first started. It's so funny to think about that because I'd already been in business before I met you for like a year or two. And uh, I was running. I had trucks that blew up, you know, and then I did the enterprise rental thing. I don't know if you know that, but before I bought my truck, my, my Ford that I had, my F-350, the nice one, and I had those other trucks, the Ram and stuff, I actually uh, leased trucks with Enterprise. I rented them. And uh, I don't know if I ever told you this, but, man, it was tough to make money doing that. You know, everybody on YouTube and Facebook, and a lot of you guys talk about doing that or doing the uh, uh, what you did. You came out of the uh, RV stuff, right? So, oh, yeah, RV, uh, that's, that's a waste, waste of time. Yeah, because you I'm can't make how any money, man. Yeah, how can you go all the way to California for a dollar seventy or a dollar forty, whatever, and then you gotta go all the way back to Indiana dead head? You gotta right. be kidding. Yeah, picking up an L card or whatever. There is no money in it. You know, yeah, the problem is that they're not really paying you a dollar forty. They're paying you seventy-five cents. Yeah, by the time you cover fuel and time, there's no money in that. You know, and there, you hell, you had a, a couple guys that were gonna come out of that, and they were so addicted to it. You know, they're not buying a trailer or doing something. They even signed on with us. And then they went right back to the RVs. They never even took one load for us because they're just, they think that's the only way to do it. You know, and it, yeah. they're scared. Yeah. But it's, there's no money in that. If you really look at it on paper, there's no money in it. You know, Ooh. that's for like retirees, you know? Yeah. Well, if you, yeah, like if you have an income, like, you know, uh, you got a retirement, like you said. Yeah. Like that is fine because, or if you live like, uh, let's say halfway, Let's say that you take uh, loads to uh, to Texas. Okay, so you come to Indiana, you go back home, you know, and things like that. Or if you live, like, say, in Arizona and you go to California, okay, because you're going half halfway home, you know, to your house. But uh, other than that, I mean... Well, I no. guess unless you wanted to see the country, if you live, you know, close to where you could pick them up, and then you just wanted to see, you know, go with your wife or whatever and go to, you know, California or Utah or Washington... And you wanted to see the, you know, the sites. I guess it'd be okay. But as far as doing it as a business, there's no. I mean, you did it. You know, there's no money in it. You did it for what six months, right, or something? I did it for about about three, four months. And after that, I said, wait a minute. But I was doing my my math, and I said, uh, this is no good. I mean, how many hours do I got to be driving to make this kind of money? Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
So being an owner operator and you've even considered buying another truck and putting a driver in your truck and keeping it on with us. And uh, you're going to buy, you're hopefully going to buy a new truck and everything, but you're going from a hot shot to a semi. Why are you going, why are you thinking about that? Just because uh, it's more comfortable or what? Yeah, because it's more comfortable. I mean, the yeah. money is more or less, it's more or less the same because um, people that think uh, in, uh, in a smaller truck, you're going to, um, you're going to spend less uh, diesel, but not really because, um, um, you spend more or less the same. Also, you have to understand that when you take a load, you're stressing, you're stressing the engine more on a small truck than a bigger truck, you know? Right. right. Yeah. But, um, that's what I try to tell people because they always ask me what equipment should I buy before they buy it. And I'm like, man, you should just go get a, even a used whatever, you know, get a truck, man. And, and it's going to be more comfortable. It's going to be the same thing. And they're like, oh, but I want to drive the little truck and the little trailer. Even people that have driven semi for years are like, I want to go smaller, less headaches and blah, blah, blah. But they've just never had, you know, I'm like, go rent one and live in the back of the truck and actually do oh, yeah, it. Man. And then you'll see, yeah. you know, it ain't no different, you know, in my opinion. I think and, uh, it's harder and, to run the hot shot. And it gets hard. It gets hard because, um, I mean, it's hard to sleep back there, man, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now wintertime yeah. comes. In, uh, in wintertime, it gets pretty bad, too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it gets cold too. You don't have the APU and all that. And you got a beautiful truck, man. That Laramie, you know, it's beautiful, man. A big, it's pretty space. It's not the Mega Cab though, right? It's just the, oh, the regular no. one. Yeah, the crew, yeah. Uh, crew yeah, cab. The yeah, yeah, it was like mine, but you know, and you take the back seat out and everything like I did, and it's it's not bad, but it's definitely you got to kind of sleep. If you're a big guy, you got to sleep at an angle. You know, I took my passenger seat out. And I slept at an angle in mine for a long time, and it wasn't bad. I mean, I had a memory foam mattress. That's what I did. I took my seats off, and I got a nice uh, mattress back there. I sleep pretty good, though, but still. Did you finally you know, take them out? Because I know you had you had yours in for a while. You must have finally took them out, huh? What's that? The seats, you finally took them out? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I took them off. I took them off, and uh, now it's more comfortable, you know. Yeah, yeah, but still, right. you know, a big truck is more comfortable, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, you don't have to go so far in a semi, man. We have to run, you know, 3,000 miles, you know, with the rates that we're getting. Uh, I got, a, you know, guys that run semis with us now, and they're doing really good, man. And they don't have to work as hard. They go deadhead 30 miles, 50 miles, you know, and pick up a next load and, you know, whatever. But we got to run, you know, pretty far to do it. But we're doing, you know, we're doing good. I think this batch has been really good. We've made a lot of changes this year. Um, you know, so things are... They're doing pretty good yeah, right this, now. Uh, this dispatch is pretty aggressive. It's good, huh? Yeah. I mean, so it's far, always you know, we, we, we've had, we, you know, we hired on, because we don't just have the one that's with you, Javier, but we have some others as well. And because uh, I wanted to have like five people, six people in, right? And uh, so we've got like five, but a couple of them were kind of like assholes. So we, they didn't work, you know? But are those um, from the same company or what? Uh, one of them was, and another one wasn't. They were from a different company. Um, and then Javier, he's trying to build his business as well. You know, they, they do a pretty good job, man. If you go online and you follow them, you know, I tell people, hey, we don't dispatch, but I can give you to a guy, you know. And uh, they're doing pretty good, man. Yeah, um, they are. From what they I are. can tell, he, I think he, he, he books about 20, 15 or 20 trucks now, something like that, between yeah. me and he, I think the, they got a couple trucks and stuff, so they do pretty good. And He uh, called me out. He called me up a couple of days ago. Uh, hey, so are you ready? I said, no, man, wait. wait I'm not ready yet. Hey, come yeah. on, man. Come on, we need you here. Let's go. I yeah. said, okay. You know, you know what, though? I don't know if I told you this, but the last, like, three weeks, I don't know if it's because he's Hispanic and you're Hispanic or whatever, but you've been the – it seems like you guys kiss each other's ass. You've been, like, the top guy in the for money for, like, three weeks, man, four weeks. Who, him and I? He gives you the best loads or what, man? But <laughs> no. no, the thing is, you know what he told me? The thing is, he said that, man. He said, you just get the job know, done. No, he said, you know what's good, man, about you? That if I tell you, hey, I have a load to main. Okay, how much? As long as he pays me good, I go for it. Uh, hey, I got a load to South, South Dakota. Let's go for it. Now, he said that he got all the people that, oh, no, no. If it's not for Georgia, no, I don't go. If it's not. So how you how you want to make the money? Right. You can make the money That's like the that. Thing. 
you know, you, you just do whatever it takes to get the job done. And we've got like, you know, probably three, four guys here that they're like you. They just do whatever, go wherever. I want to make money. I want to make bread. You know, when I want to come home, I'll tell you, hey, you send me home, I'll have beer, whatever, chill at the house. But when I'm ready to work, I'm ready to make money. And then you have these other people that they're just, they're, they're not taking it serious like that. You know what I mean? They're kind of like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. You got a lot of, on your list of I don't want to do's is bigger than the list of I'll do it. You know what I mean? Oh, that's crazy, man. You can't, you, you know, you can't be in this kind of ass, you know? You can't be in this kind of business like that. No, you yeah. can't. But, uh, I mean, you've definitely seen us go through, and, and insurance too now, you know, for somebody that's watching this video, um, you know, and you started with me when I was still in my first three years uh, in the beginning when, it, when, when, you know, your first three years, they consider you a new business. For insurance, right? The insurance was expensive. I think when you came on, we were paying what, like two thousand dollars a month or twenty five. Yeah, it was, high, it was expensive. And now yeah, we've got it down where if you got a good record, you know, you can get you know twelve hundred dollars a month, thousand dollars a month, whatever. You know what I mean? And uh, and I think you've been with us a long time, but you've got a really good record too. I think yours might even be cheaper. I don't know, but I know no, that mine that's a big benefit. That. Mine is cheaper than that. I yeah, pay. Uh, cheaper. I don't remember, but I know yours is. Is a, I, I forgot, I should have asked Azure how much it was, but it's it's cheaper than twelve hundred or thousand, and that's but you, again, you have a good record. Some of these people they have a ticket, they're not gonna get the same, you know what I mean? So yeah, but yeah. you've been with us a long time too, so that, that makes a big difference, you know. But that's a big a big benefit is signing on to any company or, or leasing on or or whatever the insurance, man. That's the biggest the insurance, you know, and we've yeah, been able to, to, to do better now. Um, over the years and get it get it quite a bit cheaper, but it wasn't easy. It took a long time, you know. And you know the other the other good point is that you have you always have to keep that truck in good condition, man. Yeah. The truck and trailer, because yeah. if you don't do the maintenance on your truck and trailer, you're gonna have a lot of problems. Yeah, you got how, how many miles you got on your truck now? Because you bought it brand new, right? And you've got what three four hundred thousand miles on it now. Three hundred three hundred fifty thousand. 350,000 and you haven't had any, you know, knock on wood, whatever, but we, you haven't had no major problems, you know, you had a little no. stuff, you know, but it's been going strong, right? But you, you're somebody, again, you do a lot of your own maintenance and you do your maintenance religiously, right? Yeah, like you're I do always that. doing the CCV, you know, the, oil changes, the filter, I'm, I'm, the, the transmission, everything, right? Everything, oil changes, trans, uh, oil changes, uh, and um, uh, fuel, uh, uh, fuel, um, fuel filters, all that. He says every fifteen thousand. I never wait fifteen thousand. I usually do it like um, twelve thousand. And I got my I got my thing back there on the on the on the uh, on the bed of the truck. That anywhere I am, if he says twelve thousand, twelve thousand two hundred, whatever, I just go buy my oil, my thing, and I go underneath the truck. I wait till the truck cools off. And I do it on my own right there. I have it. And then I take it to an auto part and they just uh, throw the uh, the oil, you know, whatever. But yeah. you got you to gotta be on top, man, because if not, I mean, that's, you know, the way I work with my truck is I don't even see it as a truck. I see it as my buddy. Yeah. He takes good care of me. I take good care of him, you know. Right. You just yeah. got the ice and transmission on it? The ice and transmission on your yeah. truck? Yeah, yeah, the ice and, the ice and yeah. And also the uh, differential oil, the transmission oil, I change, I change the, uh, I do all that shit because I went to the dealership and they were charging me $750 oh, to do the trans shit. yeah transmission oil change, uh, filter and differential, $780. And yeah. I said, no, no, I'm gonna do it on my own. I went and I bought the oil, I went and I bought everything. It cost me like 300 and some change. Right. And I did everything on my own. You know. Yeah, you can't make any money pay, taking it to the dealer, man. It's too damn expensive, you know? No, you uh, can't. If you're going to hot shot, I think that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. You need to be a little educated on your maintenance. You need to know how to change oil. You need to know how to know your truck. You got to feel the tires when they're hot. You got to feel the, the bearing. You just got to know this shit. You're not going to learn. You got to pay a lot of money, man. A lot, a lot of, of money. money. You know, I was listening to a guy talk about the Enterprise Rentals and how it's 22 cents a mile, um, you know, for to rent the Enterprise trucks, and uh, you know how it's cheaper in the long run to rent the truck than it is to buy your own truck. Um, and I oh, said, yeah. there's no way, man, because even with the, and I've done both, you know, 
And my my enterprise rentals wasn't even that bad. I think I was getting like five thousand or ten thousand miles a month for free. And then I don't know, it's five thousand miles a month for free, and then every mile after that was fifteen cents a mile. But I had four trucks. And oh, uh, true. you know, so I had a good deal with them, right? So it wasn't bad really. But it uh, you know, I think this guy was saying it's a flat twenty two cents a mile. You're gonna run what, ten, twelve thousand miles a month in a hot shot if you're going, right? So, I say I, I, I drive more than that in a month. Yeah. I drive like uh, 14,000. Yeah, well, I mean, not every month, but most of the time you're going to do between 10 and 14,000. And people think that's crazy, but you can do it, man. If you're really, and legally, you can do it inside the logs, too. And we've oh, yeah. both done it. You know, we do it, you do it now. And, uh, you know, if you uh, look at the data, man, you're going to get killed on those miles. You're, I mean, I was paying like $4,000 a month for the truck at 15 cents a mile with the first 5,000 free. I was still paying like 4,000 a month. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can't they say that a lot of people, they say, well, you know, that's good because I can deduct it on my, uh, on my taxes. But still, you're paying a lot of money. I mean, I won't pay that much. Yeah, you, you won't pay that much, and you your truck's going to go five years, basically, you know, and 500,000, 600. You know people that have them. They take care of them. They got, you know, five, 600,000 miles on the on the ram with the icing. Yeah, yeah. They say that after 50,000 miles, you can go ahead and get a new truck from them. That's what I heard. Huh. Which is, yeah, you know. Are yeah. you talking about on the Enterprise? I'm talking about if you own it. Yeah, on the Enterprise, no. they traded me out every 50,000, 60,000. I think I had one truck, and they, they, they have a, a, a something in a computer at the office. They know when it comes up to do. Uh, I had 90,000 miles, and they were ticked off. They're like, no, we got to get you a new truck. And I was in California or somewhere. I said, okay, yeah. I'll be back, you know, right away, maybe in a week or two weeks. And I said, no, it's got to be back in two days or whatever, you know. So that, that sucks too. And then with their maintenance, you got to go through Firestone. And how the, if you go to Firestone, you're there for all day or two all days. Day, all day. All day. All day. All day. It's ridiculous. Day. And then they want to rotate the tires and all the stuff. I, mean, I could go through a Jiffy Lube or do it myself like that. Hey, you know that I'm um, talking about Firestone. I was, you know, I was driving with those tires, um, the ones that they have a Firestone commercial tires. Yeah. They're no good, man. No mm -mm. good. What are you running on there now? Michelin's? I'm buying, I'm buying, uh, now when my truck gets out of the, um, of the, uh, of the shop right now. Yeah. You know, someone hit me on the side. Um, I'm going to get uh, Michelin. Michelin's? Yeah. There's you another. Know, you know what yes. you ought to do? You know what you ought to do is what I tell everybody to do is what, because I had it on my F-450s. And my bigger trucks, because they they only put them on the 450 and bigger. They don't put them on the 35. But uh, get 14 ply tires. But you got to get new rims. You can, but if 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 uh, if you get some money from the insurance or whatever, you can buy some new rims like uh, the Alcoa wheels. They're about two grand, you know, two two twenty five something like that. And then buy the tires that are 14 ply tires, and they'll go like a year, man, year and a half the same tires. But you got to change the rim. You got to change the rim. They don't make that tire in a, I think those are 17s or 17 and a half inch rims on the, on the truck. Cause I have yeah. the rims too. I can't remember what size. I think it's 17 and a half. 17. Yeah, you got to go to 19 and a half inch rim. But the good thing about that is if you, and it makes the truck up a little bit, but if, if you put 19 and a half inch rims on your truck, um, you can go to any loves pilot, fly J, whatever. And you and they can give you a tire. So if you have a tire blowout, you don't have to try to find a little mom and pop place. You can go right to the truck stop and they can give you a tire. Oh really? Yeah. The other thing is uh, the uh, the trailer. A lot of guys they change the rims on the trailer and do the same. And what I've noticed, you know, the guys they've been doing it a long time. And when they go into the truck stop, if they need me, they got a deal, a good deal for you know whatever how much. They'll put the tires on the truck and the trailer, everything all matching set, you know, but it makes it easier, you know, because they can't yeah. work on the little rims, the 17s or whatever. The no, they gloves, the pilot, they won't work on them. Yeah. But hey, I only, got, one, I only got, I only got 6% on my, uh, on my phone. Yeah. Mine's about to die too. Yeah. I'll wrap it up. It's been a good talk though. Actually, mine just gave me a low power thing, but, uh, 
Yeah, man, it's been a good talk. I just wanted to basically say, hey, man, you know, you like working here. You've been happy so far. You're getting paid good. You've been with us for quite a few years now and stuff. So that's that's it, you know? Yeah. No, I I, I mean, um, that's why that's why when I when I see some guys stressing out there, or whatever, uh, and we uh, we exchange um, information about companies and all that, I usually um, I usually try to you know to tell them to uh, to join us because um, you know I mean it's not bad you know it's compared to other people I guess. Yeah. Well, it must have been okay because it's got you by now. This time, you know, for a few years, you've been able to be with us and make money and pay your bills, whatever, you know, so it's worked yeah. out. You know what I mean? I, not everybody's going to have to say. I know there might be a couple of guys that are like, man, you know, it's been good, but fuck this dispatch guy. <laughs> you, know, that, you know that guy? Everybody yeah. Pity, yeah. Man, fuck it, you know? yeah. Well, you know, you cannot, you cannot make everybody happy, you know? Yeah, you can, man. But uh, even us, you know, we've, we've been, it's been years, man. You can't go years without having an argument. You know what I mean? It's oh, impossible. Yeah, yeah we had, had we a had lot of big arguments. Yeah. <laughs> we've had a but lot of, uh, like, fuck you, I quit. Fuck you, you're fired, whatever. And then the next day we go back to work, whatever. You know what I mean? But yeah, hey, serious. man, you know, it, this is a stressful industry, man. With the shippers and all the bullshit, the DOT that we got to go through. It is, sometimes it's stressful, man. You know how it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, especially the DOT sometimes out there, they, uh, you know, they're assholes, but, you know, yeah. it all depends. Yeah, I will say it all depends how, how you behave, how you talk to them, you know, they're fine. Yeah. You know. And you've gotten away with more than I can even, man, these guys are so nice to you. You could talk your way out of a, a, a freaking gunfight, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> I, don't know, man. I don't know what happened, but I, I always get my way out. You, man, they if it was me, every time I was driving and I got caught with window tin or, or 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 the ELD, you know, whatever problems, or I just turned it off back in the day when I would run illegal and stuff or whatever, man, it was always they they hit me every time, man, hammer down, yeah, we got him, you know, they called three yeah. people, we got him, you know. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I mean, I've been I've been through some 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 guys that I said, oh God, man, this guy, at the end. He said, okay, man, you can go. No problem. I said, oh, I said, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you lucky bastard. I got an angel, man. You know. yeah, hey, so. Um, All right, well, I'm going to get off here, man. You tell the wife I said hello.